um, unemployment um, on the rise and things of that nature, instead of being fearful about job security, um, we need to trust in the Lord. And I'm not saying that we should not be aware of and concerned about these things. Um, but we need to know that God is our source and it'll give us a sense of peace and stability. And I want to talk about that because every day I witness coworkers who um, every day when we get there, we get there before students because they have um, diminished some of the school day for students so we can have less contact um, to slow the spread of COVID. And so every day, you know, I've got a couple of coworkers and they're talking about the stats of COVID-19 and, you know, what it's doing and where it's going and what if we go on furlough again? What if we have to be unemployed again and they're not giving $600 anymore? And so all of this is playing out. I'm thinking, Lord, I'm so grateful that I know you as my source. I, I have a peace, I have an understanding that you are my source and that, and that I can trust and rest in you. I can acknowledge you and because I do, you would direct my paths. And so come what may, I'm not asking for, if it were to happen, I know that God would take care of me because he is trustworthy, he's reliable, just like that definition, amen. And I have sown into my godly trust account. So I know come what may, God is faithful, he has my back. And so understanding that when we know God is our source, we can be at peace. That's when a scripture talks about keeping our mind stayed upon him, then we'll be in perfect peace. It comes by resting in and trusting in and knowing his track record. He has never lost a case. He's never lost a battle. And so we can trust and rest in who he is. He is who he says he is, and he'll do what he, he'll do what he says he'll do. So we need to trust and rest and sit back and taste and see that the Lord is good. To trust in him with all of our mind, our soul, our spirit, to rest in him and to honor him with our substance and all of our increase, knowing that he's going to bring about a harvest. Amen. And so what we want to do is ask this question, how do you make God your source, Minister Marla? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So you make God your source by trusting him in your tithe and your offering, in your first fruits. That's how you honor him. It's just that simple. And so when you do that, you are acting on your faith. You're telling God, I believe you, God, instead of what I see. I believe you instead of the storms that I see. I believe you instead of the jockeying and the talk of my job. God, I believe and trust you, God, the, not what, what I hear and what I see. And so that's how we begin to demonstrate and build up our most holy faith and trust in the Lord. We demonstrate that trust by what we give. And so we give because that's the way God has set it up. And it's not because God needs anything from us because the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to him. He does not need us to give. We need to give, but God doesn't need us to. We can't give enough to him that which he has given to us. He has given to us his best. He gave us his son. So will he not withhold, what, what more would, would he withhold? And he's given us eternal life. He's given us redemption. So he has nothing else. He gave us his best is the way to say that. And so we understand that we don't need to give or God doesn't need us to give. Amen. We need to give. God doesn't need us to. Amen. And so he set up a system to demonstrate that we trust and place our trust in God's economy and not the world. And God forbid all those people who are fearful and fretful because they know they are looking at the storm and the economy. They're trying to see whose plan is going to provide for them that supernatural protection. But pr protection comes from God. God is our source. So we want to make sure that we are established and we rest and we're a part of his kingdom in the earth. Amen. And so. We do that um, by way of giving. And God could have really just made us. Why didn't he just make us all wealthy? He could have very well done that. But God set it up a different way. He wanted us to go through the maturation process because giving and trusting is a process. Just like a natural trust, they set aside stipulations on when you can access that money so that there's a maturity to be able to handle, <coughs> excuse me, what's been set aside for you. And so that's why God didn't just make us, bam, out of the womb. We're wealthy spiritually, but natural wealth has to be produced. And we have to trust in God, and we have to build ourselves up, and we have to be line upon line, precept upon precept, in the name of Jesus. And that's how God has set it up, amen? And so we understand that um, giving is a process. Trusting God is a process. 
And I want to share a testimony with us tonight. Um, and it's about a pastor who was holding a meeting in his church. And so he invited a speaker to the, um, the meeting, but he was so worried about how his people, the track record of how they gave, he was worried about whether or not he would even be able to give the man an offering. And so he was really concerned and fretting. And that makes me think about um, Jesse Duplan as he shares his testimony when he first started out in the ministry. Um, he was um, kind of like doing a chitlin circuit of evangelism. And so he was ministering at a church. And um, I think he said for a number of days and at the end of the, the meeting, they, get, they paid him with a Coca-Cola pop or it might have been Pepsi, but I think he said Coca-Cola. And he says he still has in his office this day, so I'm not making this up. And so this pastor was thinking, man, my people aren't going to give. We've, we didn't, we've invited this speaker to minister to God's people, but I don't even think we can pay him. And so the first thing that the, pa the speaker said, he said, I'm going to tell you people this one thing. He said, I got here on my own, and I'm going to leave on my own, and I don't need you to give, but you need to give. And so he put that out there first and foremost. And so the pastor was like holding his head in disappointment saying, oh, my gosh, they're really not going to give now because you offended them. And so what happened was the, the speaker began to share about trusting in the Lord as your source, building up the people's faith. And what occurred was that after the meeting, the pastor called the speaker and he said, um, my people has never, have never given that much in their entire life. And so um, what the pastor got up the next, the following week, and he um, repented to his congregation um, for just being a little coward concerning how to t uh, receive an offering. I almost said take, but that's the problem. When I think about some of the circles that I grew up in, um, you would see the um, deacons and the deaconesses and no disrespect to that practice, but you would see them. Um, on the altar with the little gold um, offering plate with the um, red velvet lining, and they would take an offering, and they would play sad music and share sad faces and play the violin, and they would take an offering, and that would defeat the purpose. That would not motivate anybody to give. And so it's better to do what the man of God did. He put a demand on God's people to not look for and think about him as a source, but to know God was their source. And so that's why the overflow was built up, because the people knew they got an impartation to trust God, to know that God was their source. Amen. And so I thought that was so powerful of a story. And so what happened was not only did the pastor, after he gave, um, repented, the people began to hug him and say, we forgive you, pastor. We understand. Um, and so after that, the people began to supernaturally give and they began to place money on the altar. And I know that happens a lot in a lot of circles. And I'm not going to say yay or nay about that, you know, um, and say that God would never move in that dimension. But these people begin to give so much until at the end of the service, they had taken in somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Now that's trusting the Lord with all of your substance and in in your increase, Amen. And so we have to have a different mindset and perspective on how we talk to people about in God we trust. And so I thought that was really powerful. So the Scripture tells us in Proverbs three and nine. Um, trusting God is about honoring the Lord with our substance. Substance being is weighty, you know, it's measurable. And so honoring the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all of our increase, that's how we begin to trust God. We honor him with everything that we get, everything that touches our hands, everything that comes across our pocketbook. That's how we honor God the first time we get it putting him first in his rightful place as our source, as a place of um, honoring him. And so I want to also mention that if you're not doing that, then um, I'm not going to condemn you or beat you up or just make you feel a certain way. But we want to make sure we get you to shift and to begin to trust in the Lord. And so because so many... So much deception has taken place in the body of Christ. God's people have been so manipulated and just so um, taken in by false doctrine and so a misrepresentation of God's um, system of giving, you know, thousand dollar lines and things of that nature. And so 
We want to make sure it's caused a lot of Christians pain. They've given things that they could not afford to give. They've given their rent money and things of that nature. And so we want to teach people not to give emotionally, you know, but there should be an, an emotion attached, and it's called joy because God likes a cheerful giver, but we're not to give under compulsion. We give by the Spirit's leading acknowledging him, God, which way do I go? Which way do I flow? Because money is called currency. It flows. And so we have to trust God. We have to acknowledge him. God, where do I give? Who do I give to? You know, this time of year on my job today, we were having a Zoom. And I thought, my God, here it is, the world. I'm on a committee, and it's called the Sunshine Committee. And we um, try to build morale in the building, especially during this COVID-19. And so we were talking about... Um, finding a family to adopt. And my, the people in my job, they are some givers, I'm telling you. We have one lady whose um, daughter is had heart surgery. She was 10 years old. And so we began to bring um, giftings um, for the hospital stay. And I'm not saying that to to boast, but it was so awesome to be a part of that. And so the here, we, here it is, the world is thinking about how to give and how to pour back. And so how much more for those of us in the kingdom of God? And so we want to make sure that people aren't tricked, you know, that people have an understanding of why they're giving and just come against that deception and that manipulation that has caused the sheep to be scattered and caused the sheep not to trust. Because God is trustworthy, trust in the Lord, not necessarily in man, trust in the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. And it's so funny because like three times this week I um, found saw that phrase I wasn't even supposed to teach this lesson my husband is under the weather maybe he'll be back next week and so I'm riding down the street and I was having a conversation um, thinking about some things the responsibilities we have be, be, and just because of where things are right now and so I look over to my left and I see a vehicle I think it's called Baxter's towing service and on the side of their vehicle their model says in God we trust do you and I thought, okay, Lord, here I am meditating. It's bringing me back in. Yep, God is my source. I don't have to worry. I don't have to think and meditate on this. And I look over to my left and I see that. Two days later, I'm riding down the street down um, Apple Avenue, and there's a church. And to my left again, I look, and on the marquee, it said, trust in the Lord. And I saw it one more time tonight when I went in the women's bathroom. There is a marquee, or rather back in our pantry big sign that said trust in the Lord I'm thinking okay Lord I hear you <laughs> trust in the Lord with all of your heart Marla lean not unto your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths fear the Lord and depart from evil honor the Lord with your substance with your barns they will be plenty when you do that they shall burst with new wine and so okay Lord I hear you hopefully you out there on Facebook you hear him he is saying once, twice, three times, trust in me, acknowledge me, amen. And so we have to understand that people have been hurt and manipulated. And so we trust God. Some people are trying to figure out how they're going to squeeze it out of their budget. And that's a sad commentary. We find ourselves there many times in the past, or people can be in that predicament, thinking erroneously that you give to everything else first and then you give to God what's what's left well God doesn't like leftovers he likes to be first and so many people find that playing out every month just trying to figure out Lord how are we going to do this and so they trust in that system that they're familiar with and they throw away to the wind the trust of the Lord they forget that God is a supernatural God the way in his kingdom to get is to give and so we have to trust in him with all of our our, our substance amen and so people are trying to figure out how we're going to squeeze it and make it happen but the lord made it easy for us to trust him and what I, what i mean by that is that he didn't tell us a specific amount that we had to give he just said give a certain percentage and the power and the strength of that is that if even if you are you have a million dollars or you have 10 or a dime everybody can give 10 percent. so it doesn't matter how much you give per se, but God said just 10%. So if you got $10 or if you got $1,000, God says, everybody across the board, just give me 10% and above that with offerings. And I thought that's really powerful in the wisdom of God to make us all on an even level playing field. But we know in the kingdom as we mature, 
yes, you that have more, uh, we that have more, there's a, a more of a responsibility on us to give because God is not only looking at what we give, but how much we have left. So it's a difference if you have two, two coins and you throw it in like the widows might did versus you got 2,000 that you could have given. And so God is looking at that as well. Amen. And so we have to understand that God made us all equal in the percentage of what we could give. And I, that's such a loving father, such a loving thing to do because you have your children have different gifts and, and um, facets to who they are, but you love them all the same. You expect um, the same thing from them in certain situations. And so that's just the love of the father that he has for his children. He wants to make sure we're on an even playing field. And so we want to understand that when we give our first priests unto the Lord, God says, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. And so in today's vernacular, that would say, I'm going to fill up your checking account, your savings account, and it's going to burst. It's going to overflow. And so we understand that it's better to give than to hoard. And so God wants us to utilize um, and access our trust in him. Amen. And so when you take a portion of what you have and you trust God with it versus J.C. Penney versus Macy's versus wherever the case may be, when you take that percentage and sow it into the kingdom, that seed goes into your future. And that's really powerful because when when things happen, you want to have something built up that you can access and kind of rest upon, predicated on what God told you to do with those investments. And so you, when it comes to sowing into your future, we, we can give seed. And so we can either eat our seed, some of us to eat, some of us to save, some of us to give. And so that's where the acknowledging God comes in. God, how much do I give? When do I give? And so we have to understand you don't want to eat up all your seed because in the future you'll be hungry. You'll starve because you have no harvest. And even the word tells us to consider how the ant stores up, how squirrels and birds right now are going to a new location where there's going to be surplus, where squirrels are gathering in because they know they're going to need to be able to have some substance. And so we have to understand we don't want to eat up all our seed. Yes, you can splurge on yourself when it's time to do that, but we have to understand we have to set some aside. Amen. And so that is the wealth of God's kingdom. That's the wisdom of God's kingdom. And so I'm almost done, but I want to share a couple other points is that when we plant seeds, it ensures that we'll have a crop in the future for our family. And when I think about farmers, I think about how much it takes to run a farm. You know, you got all these different animals. It requires seed. It requires harvest. It requires feed. And so we have to make sure as farmers in the kingdom of God, we sow. We know what to sow. And we sow into our future. Amen. And when I read this, I thought about the scripture in Ecclesiastes 11 and 17. And it says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Bread is symbolic of your seed, your giving. Amen. And so it says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and even to eight, meaning that be plur plural with your giving. Have many investments, have much seed in the ground. And so it says seven or eight offerings, seven or eight seed places of seed. And it says, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. For thou knowest not what COVID-19 is going to do. For thou knowest not what's coming in the future. For thou knowest not, but God knows all things. So we go back to the place of acknowledging him so he can direct our paths because he knows what's coming. And we trust in him and we partner with him. Going back to the lesson last week that Prophetess Wanda Liddell taught, we partner with God, we trust God, we cast our bread, we cast our seed upon the waters that we'll find it after many days. We don't eat our seed, we give our seed, we sow our seed, amen? And we do it with a cheerful heart. And so that's all I have for us tonight. I'm going to say a prayer of benediction over us. I'm going to pray over us. But remember, we've been on this journey in our finances and God is trying to get us to trust him. 
And I think about young children, just the trust that they have in their parents. They don't have a clue about what bills need to be paid. They don't have a clue about um, how much you have left. They know when they go into the cupboard, there's going to be some cereal. When they go in the refrigerator, there's going to be some juice boxes. They know when they go to school, there's going to be some lunches, some sandwiches in their lunch box. Hey, man, they just trust. They know mom and dad have it figured out. They don't have a care in the world. They know when Christmas comes, there might be some things that mom has to take care of, mom and dad, but they know there's going to be some presents under the tree. They don't have a care. They trust in their source because it's all that they have seen. And it's only when we get older till we, under, we get disconnected from that navel and that source. And so the word says, train up a child when he is young. God is trying to train us out, train us up. So when we are old, we won't depart. So when we are mature, we can trust in him. In all of our ways, acknowledging him, amen. So as I said, that's all I have for tonight. I wanna keep part two relative for, um, Elder Camp, you know, looking forward to him um, finishing up this message, but I'm going to pray over us to trust in the Lord. So trust in him for those of you out there. Trust in him with all of your heart. He is reliable. He is a place of strength, and he is our source. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you, those that have visited with us tonight. Amen. Amen.